Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Joseph Butler, at the beginning of his sermon number eight, is going to open up a problem, which is fairly specific, but could actually be looked at as part of a much larger theological, philosophical problem. Traditionally, we call this the problem of evil, saying, you know, if there is a, a God and God is all-knowing and all-powerful and benevolent, why is there evil in the world? And he's particularly interested in the question of anger. Why did God give us anger? And he also tells us that, listen, I'm not going to get into the much larger problem. Let's just confine ourselves to this. So how can we frame this? He begins by saying, since perfect goodness in the deity is the principle from whence the universe was brought into being and by which it is Preserved. So we've got God is perfectly good, right? Out of that goodness, he produced the entire universe and sustains it in its being. So he presumably he knows what's going on. If we go on a little bit further and he says, general benevolence is the great law of the whole moral creation. So this is adding one more Additional thing to it, you know, there's sort of built into the fabric of creation itself, general benevolence, which is willing good and doing good to other beings. So he, he says, it's a question which immediately occurs then. Why had man implanted in him a principle which appears the direct contrary to benevolence? So why would we have anger, which seems to go against general benevolence? How does anger do so? Well, because when you're angry, you actually try to do some sort of punishment or harm or injury, whatever it's going to be, to some other being, the being that has angered you. So how does this actually fit in? And you could say, well, you know, human beings, imperfect creations, kind of screwed up, and that doesn't really work with getting God off the hook if you've got a powerful enough God. I mean, if you're talking about, say, the ancient Greek gods, you could even be like Epictetus the Stoic and say, you know, if you're going to complain about God, uh, about how screwed up we are, then realize that God made us out of imperfect stuff and he made us as good as we could be. It doesn't work for the God of Christianity. And, you know, Butler, who is himself a bishop, knows that quite well. So he has to give some sort of reasoning or argument about why, why we have anger. How does this actually fit into the divine plan and the divine goodness? And so he says, the foot upon which inquiries of this kind should be treated is this, to take human nature as it is and the circumstances in which it is placed as they are and then consider the correspondence between that nature and those circumstances or what course of actions and behavior respecting those circumstances any particular affection or passion leads us to. Now, it would be very easy to be a little bit mistaken or misled when you hear that take human nature as it is and be like, yeah, well, humans are screwed up. They're awful. You know, just look at these, you know, brute creatures and how easily they get angry at each other. Butler actually has in mind when he says taking human nature as it is, human nature in a sort of abstract, how it ought to be kind of sense, not just the, you know, 
human nature as we experience it here. A little bit later, he will tell us um, that he's, he's not talking about people who are vicious or those who are you know, actually on the other side. He wants to talk about the general course of resentment considered as a natural passion, neither increased by indulgence, nor corrected by virtue, nor prevailed over by other passions or particular habits of life. So how do we take an ordinary human being who's neither particularly good nor particularly bad? So how far human nature has respect to circumstances. That's the way that he frames it. That could be a little bit confusing, but what we're looking at is, well, what are we human, what are we human beings like? And then how does anger work in particular situations? So he begins by saying, God's not gonna give us a passion or an emotion that is by itself or in itself evil. He's just not going to do that. Um, and we can think of all sorts of other things. I mean, compare this to our appetite for food or our desire for sex. They're not bad in themselves. They get bad when we misuse them, or as he's going to say, abuse, right? So it's very dependent on our, our use. Our use can go wrong. So with anger, that's something that can happen to us quite easily. Um, and he says, you know, what we need to figure out here is, is, what the proper use or function or purpose of anger is. Now, he divides anger into two types, sudden or hasty anger and deliberate or settled anger. Sometimes he calls the second one resentment. Uh, the first one is sort of just a automatic reaction that we have in many cases he talks about it as being instinctual sort of like if something is coming towards your eye you turn your eye away or you close your eye right there's a lot of cases where we encounter uh, resistance or opposition as he calls it or threats or violence or you know um, harm or, or you know not injury as such because he reserves the word injury for something that's deliberately done and we react against it, right? And so what is the purpose of hasty and sudden anger? Well, he tells us that it's actually self-defense. I mean, he goes into a little bit uh, more discussion of it. He says that the reason and end for which human beings were made liable to this passion, why we can actually have this, is that we may be better qualified to do it. He talks about three things, prevent, resist, defeat, sudden force, violence, and opposition, considered merely as such, not, not in a moral sense, not attributing motives to the other person. It's basically just to you know, protect our, ourselves. And maybe we also do so with other people, maybe we get angry and we run in and save the you know, child from the burning building or something like that. He doesn't go into that. And he does say that it's for self-defense, not for the administration of justice. A little bit later, um, he'll say that, you know, sudden anger is raised by and is intended to prevent a remedy, mere harm distinct from injury. It can also be raised by what he calls injury, but that's that's a whole different topic. So that one's pretty easy to understand. God gives us or implants within us these instincts that lead us to protect ourselves. And if we didn't have that, we'd be badly off, right? We would be swamped by the problems that we, we run into. What about deliberate anger? Okay, this requires a lot more discussion and examination. He tells us that deliberate anger as such is concerned with our conceptions of virtue and vice, of moral good and evil. Those are the words that he actually uses. He says that, um, let us reflect on the manner in which we're touched with reading, for example, a feigned story of baseness and villainy worked up to move our passions. It raises indignation, somewhat of a desire that it should be punished, right? Why? Because we want to set things right. Anger helps us, according to Butler, to actually do that. He calls it resentment against 
vice and wickedness, right? And he tells us that this is actually something that preserves the common bonds of human society. It holds human society together. If we didn't punish people or we didn't react against people doing the wrong things and we're like, oh, hey, do whatever you want to people. I don't care. Even if it comes from, you know, your sadistic urges or your desire to humiliate or, you know, whatever is whatever floats your boat, man, that would break down society, according to, to Butler. So he says that it's a fellow feeling which each individual has in behalf of the whole species. We get angry when we see wrong things being done, not just to ourselves, but to other people or perhaps even to animals, right? So, you know, he says, it does not appear that this, generally speaking, is at, is at all too high amongst mankind. Um, you know, not everybody does this, but enough people do it. And he tells us that the, the point of this is actually to prevent or remedies injuries. Now, the way when, when Butler uses the word injury, he has in mind not just hurting another person, but doing so in a way that stems from, say, malice or ill will or some sort of desire to hurt that person. It could be from vice. It could be from wickedness. It could be from all sorts of things. We attribute a bad motive to the person who's doing it. And then we call it, according to him, an injury. Now, we often talk about injuries just as harm or hurts, but he has something different in mind. So deliberate anger is to prevent or remedy injuries and the, as he calls them, miseries arising from these injuries, right? So he says, this is the end for which this passion was implanted in us human beings. Why did God give us this? So that we could take our part in the, the whole universe in preventing and remedying or punishing at least the injuries that other people are doing either to us or to other people. Now he does have a very interesting discussion here about compassion. And he says, um, you know, Shouldn't we be compassionate or benevolent to other people? And this goes directly to this problem. It seems like there's a conflict here. And he says, well, I mean, you should in general be compassionate and benevolent to other people. But this needs to be, as he says, balanced by um, anger, indignation against wickedness. You don't want to be uniformly benevolent or compassionate because then you're going to be compassionate or benevolent to people who really you shouldn't be collaborating with. You shouldn't be empowering. You shouldn't be signing off on their whatever it is that they're doing. You should be opposing them instead. And so that's what, one of the purposes of anger. It helps our good nature, our generally good nature, remain good by opposing evil. And um, he also points out something else that I think is, you know, fairly, you know, easy to relate to. Human beings are restrained from doing the evil that they otherwise might do. Why? By fear of angering others and what that anger would lead to. So, it, it, you know, this is another good outcome of people getting angry. You know, you... You, as a kid, you do something mean to your sibling or a classmate, and then an adult gets angry at you and raises their voice, or maybe you know even administers corporal punishment. You're like, oh, I don't want any more of that. I'm not going to do that sort of thing anymore. Well, that leads to a better general benevolence. So we can ask ourselves this question then. All right, God, perfectly good. Uh, all powerful, made the universe, made us human beings, wants us to be benevolent. Did God do right in giving us this passion of anger? And he says, we should learn to be cautious lest we charge God foolishly by ascribing that to him or the nature he's given us, which is 
wholly owing to our own abuse of it. So if we want to complain about people going too far with anger or anything like that, that's not attributable to God. God gave us a emotion which we could use perfectly fine for doing all these good things. And instead, we human beings come along and we screw it up in a variety of ways. You know, these are what uh, Butler enumerates as the abuses of anger. So he says, men may speak of the degeneracy and corruption of the world according to the experience they've had of it, but human nature, considered as the divine workmanship, should, I think, be treated as sacred. For in the image of God made he man, that passion from whence people take occasion to run into the dreadful vices of malice and revenge, even that passion, as implanted in our nature by God, is not only innocent without, you know, uh, blame, but notice what else he says here, but, of a, but also a generous movement of mind. So it goes beyond being not bad, not, you know, morally culpable. It's actually something good. It's generous. It gets us to do some of the things for other people, maybe even for ourselves, that we ought to do in resisting wickedness, vice, evil, however you want to put it, bad motives, malice, perhaps even the revenge of other people. And uh, so this, you know, according to Butler, basically not only gets God off the hook, but says, you, you know, not only should you not blame God, you should now have a deeper appreciation for this emotion that God implanted within us and its usefulness.